This video is brought to you by Factor. Opal, an animated short that aired on Adult Swim back in October of 2020 that was exceptionally brilliant and exceptionally disturbing. Admittedly, I was late to the party on this one, having no clue what to expect. What the hell is this character? I thought to myself. The child of Arnold and Helga Bataki? Kind of weird looking. Honestly, I was like, why are folks so hyped about this short? What's the appeal? It looks like just claymation, that's it. Well, I watched it. And folks, I was not ready for this. <laughs> Adult Swim is no stranger to releasing challenging media towards their late night audience. From shows like The Boondocks to More Oral, they are one of the last creative bastions for artists on TV. Artists who are looking to share their vision, especially for animation. One of these creators is Dave Hughes, a former editor for such MTV animated shows as Beavis and Butthead and Celebrity Deathmatch. Yeah, I remember getting in trouble as a kid for watching that show. Would hear my mom walk up the stairs and I'm like, yeah, change the channel. <laughs> Good times. Jim Carrey with some impressive motor skills. <laughs> what the f Hughes longed to see more experimental programming. That he felt that that kind of caliber of content was missing from the TV landscape during the 2010s. In 2011, after pitching his concept to executive producer Mike Lazo, Hughes was given the green light to create his own experimental series for Adult Swim, titled Off the Air. This show functions as a visual mixtape, featuring surreal and obscure footage pieced together using viral videos and stock footage from the internet. These clips were edited together under a single unified theme into 10 minute episodes during its um, <laughs> a coveted 4 a.m. time slot. Hey, Insomniac's gotta watch something too. Gradually, it developed a dedicated following of artists, night owls, and animation fans alike who appreciated the platform being given to online creators looking to market their work outside of Newgrounds or YouTube. With the positive reception of the show, Hughes expanded his vision into developing a new resource for artists around the world to submit their own work directly to the network. This resulted in Adult Swim Smalls, a short film program offering more accessibility to talented creators that may otherwise struggle to find success in mainstream media outlets. The original concept of focusing on trippy but unified visuals and off the air changed into featuring narrative short films, although with an experimental twist. According to Dave Hughes, Quote, for Smalls, we're looking for more traditional shorts, a little more character and a little more comedy, as off the air can still be a little abstract. Not that they're better or worse, just that they're more dedicated to their own concept, and they're going to have a harder time finding another place that would pay them for their work. With that, their concept paid off. The Adult Swim Smalls program attracted a wide array of talent from all over the world sending in their video submissions through the internet. And among them was an underground artist and musician from Erie, Pennsylvania named Jack Stauber, the eventual creator of Opal. Jack has been a prolific artist since 2013, releasing his own avant-garde pop music and animated shorts to great acclaim. To date, he's uploaded over 180 videos onto his YouTube channel, as well as creating such hit songs as Buttercup and Oklahoma, which I can't really show because I don't want to get a copyright claim. Uh, go check him out, though. After the positive reception of his small short films, Wishing Apple, and Valentine's Day is Not for the Lonely, Jack produced a six-episode miniseries for Adult Swim called Shop, a pop opera in 2019. The story follows a man going through his shopping list at a grocery store with musical lessons learned after finding each item. Shop highlights Jack's love of the surreal, mixed-media animation, and his talent for making absolute bangers of musical numbers. During an interview with New Retrowave, Jack cited the Nickelodeon show Rugrats as a massive inspiration into his style of character design, particularly in the series pilot for Rugrats. Jack said, quote, Take some time to watch a minute of the pilot of Rugrats if you haven't seen that before. That art style is beyond incredible. This influence is uncanny with Jack's other work, noting their large eyes, lumpy faces, and giant heads. 
He also tends to use both fake resin teeth and human body doubles, adding a creepier, tactile feeling to the characters. Like many of Jack's other animated projects, Opal is a stop-motion short made using a combination of live-action, CGI, and plasticine clay animation. After shooting, the clips were edited together using Adobe Premiere Pro and then encoded onto a video cassette for Jack's signature analog look to his films. With the help of the production company William Street, the short was completed and made its debut on October 30th, 2020, precisely at midnight. Viewers had no clue what was about to hit them. But real quick, before we talk about this dark short and graphic detail, I want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Factor. Yeah, what if instead of a, a burger billboard for Opal, it was Factor instead? Yeah, they probably don't want me saying that. Um, <laughs> folks, it is summertime, but I'm still stupid busy. I'm a busy man. I got busy things to do. I'm too busy playing uh, on my phone. Bikini season is nearly upon us. I got to shed some weight in my belly, my sexy belly. Fortunately, that's where Factor has my back. You see, I'm a big guy. Fat's hard for me, but I can put on muscle, which is why I'm trying to do keto. And that's what I asked from Factor. I'm like, I need some meals that are curated to be calorie smart with around like, I'd say less than 500 the calories per serving. You know, I, I, I want to make sure I'm not overeating with these meals. And that's what Factor is about. They're like, yo, we got you. These meals are curated to be calorie smart with around or less than 550 calories per serving. You know, also, I, like I said, I got the keto path going on with my meals to help me get in the eating parameters I need. I got the black pepper and sage pork chop. I got the chicken piccata. I got the garlic and herb chicken breast. You know, Factor preps these meals that are tailored made for yours truly. That's me. Plus, they are fresh and never frozen, and they are delivered right to your door. It is legit such a time saver. I don't have to cook during the day. Instead, I grab a factor meal out of the fridge and put it in the oven, and boom, it's lunchtime while I watch cartoons and call it work. It's genuinely a time saver. These meals can be ready in like two minutes if you roll with the toaster oven. So head to factor75.com or click the link down below and use code SABERSPARK50 to get 50% off your first factor box. That is once again factor75.com or click the link down below and use code SABERSPARK50 to get 50% off. Again, I highly recommend Factor. I eat that food. I love it. Go hit them up today. We see you, Opal. Your troubles are miles away. What is Opal about? For the record, I recommend watching the short if you haven't, as this portion of the video will be full of spoilers. Okay, you got your warning? Let's go. Opal follows the story of a young girl as she leaves the safety of her adoring family and ventures into a strange, desolate house across the street. The family at the start of the short seems uh, a little off, to say the least, but hey, at least they love their Opal and they love to see her dance. <laughs> Despite warnings from her parents, Opal enters said house, compelled by a sad song that is beckoning her up to the attic. Inside, she is verbally harassed by the inhabitants of the home, each one with their own unique musical number capturing their particular frustrations with life. And all the while, they call Opal Claire and blame her for their problems. An elderly blind man demands she brings him his cigarettes as he zones out, listening to the TV. Hey, don't think about hiding them again either. I know it's you who's doing that. The blind man claims to be the center of attention, believing the TV ads are singing specifically to him. He's envious of how it sounds so easy to breathe on TV, not understanding why the announcers don't struggle to speak like he does. Why does it sound so easy to breathe on TV? After his song, the blind man does not recognize Opal by smell, and he freaks out, screaming at her to leave the house. Opal is terrified, but she runs upstairs, still determined to follow the beckoning song from the attic window. Before going further, Opal is stopped by a narcissistic man surrounded by mirrors, complaining how he's perceived by others while not even looking at her. He sees every imperfection as a new project, something to fixate on and correct, over-dealing and overthinking about his insecurities. They turned me down, now I live my nightmare. 
gotta be seen by someone out there. After getting away from him, a frightening inebriated woman grabs Opal by the ankle. In a daze, the woman sees herself as a victim in need of rescuing, waiting for someone to come along and fix her issues. Examining the room, it is very obvious to see that she is addicted to drugs and alcohol and is emotionally dependent on her young daughter, to which she sings about in this twisted lullaby. Mama needs a little girl to fall in her arms. Opal narrowly escapes the terrifying woman and makes it up to the attic and slams the door. She gazes out of the window, revealing a billboard for Opal's Burgers, located nine miles away. Opal? The same name? And those folks on the billboard look just like the family at the start. Uh, what's that about? Well, reality starts to set in. We come to find out that Opal has been Claire the entire time, and the house she's been carefully wandering through is her own home. A prison full of her self-destructive family. The attic is Claire's safe haven, the only room she can lock from the inside to keep them out. She is routinely ignored and neglected by her family, walking on eggshells to avoid attracting their attention, as they are far too preoccupied with their own issues to care about her properly. No one in the family is capable of protecting her or advocating for her safety. Claire doesn't utter a single word during the entire short film, highlighting that she physically struggles to speak up for herself or has been bullied into silence. And so she stares at the billboard, wishing she had the same kind of attentive family from an advertisement, but is stranded with no one to come to her aid. To survive in this terrible home life, Claire fantasizes about being in a family that genuinely cares about her and values her as a person, that they are there for her, rather than Claire just being there for them. It is a dark, tragic story of a little girl trying to find any scrap of love out of the life she's been dealt with and how said life is her prison. <laughs> it's the same coping mechanism she's learned by modeling what her family does, but not in the same way they use it. She's given up trying to get their attention and now finds it easier to stay invisible in her own home. Every day for her is a depressing loop of neglect, escapism, and isolation. Her grandfather has obvious breathing issues, but is addicted to cigarettes and television, seeing them as more deserving of his attention rather than her. And when Claire tries to help him in her own way by hiding them, he yells at her for it. The grandfather's addiction has led to his illness and vision issues, but he refuses to own his behavior and make lifestyle changes for the better. You know, it's, it's evil to help people who don't need help, Claire. <laughs> far more interested in me than anything you got going on. For Claire's father, he has become so focused on his own appearance that he can't even make eye contact with her, only pausing to make a dig at her ankles. He doesn't let her get a word in edgewise, commenting on himself being a tiny growing thing and hating the negative comments of others. In reality, he's deeply insecure and has been hiding in the bathroom to avoid his wife's destruction. Hey, you just gonna walk by without saying hello? <laughs> look at me. I, I actually look really good in that. Claire's mother is a raging drunk and pill addict who has torn the bedroom to shreds and clings to Claire for her support. But she still sees herself as a powerless victim who is caught in a virtuous cycle. You and I don't live, Claire. We survive. The term virtuous cycle, according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, refers to a chain of events in which one desirable occurrence happens after another, creating a process of improvement. A common example of this is quitting smoking. It is notoriously difficult to quit long term, but with determination and consistency, even at the early stages, the symptoms do get better. Uh, for example, uh, people who quit smoking experience lower blood pressure at first, and then after a few months, uh, less shortness of breath, and gradually reduce their risk of coronary heart disease after years. All in all, it is a journey of progress step by step, but it does get better. However, 
Claire's mother has completely misinterpreted the meaning of this term. She's instead using it as an excuse to see herself as a victim of circumstance, who mistreats her family, but still demands unwarranted apologies from them. Our adversaries are in denial. They don't know the wrong they do. And they never repent how I want them to. By doing this, she refuses to accept responsibility for her actions, passively expecting Claire to clean up the mess for her. All the while, the mother has been terrorizing everyone else in the house when they try to stop her. It is heavily implied during both her song and a split second shot of the father's real face that the mother is responsible for how he looks now. Throughout the short, there is a massive emphasis on the importance of being seen. The characters themselves all have massive eyes in their design, especially with Claire and the Billboard family. But her real life family members all have some kind of visual impairment or issue when dealing with each other. Claire's father is blind and can only recognize Claire by sound and smell. He listens to the television and is envious of how it sounds so easy to breathe on TV, disregarding how his own addictive habits have destroyed his lungs and vision. Claire's father is so obsessed with his own looks that he only notices Claire when she's walking by the bathroom door and demands her attention. He physically can't look at her as he has a reflection chamber of mirrors strapped to his head. And Claire's mother has cloudy vision from her excessive drinking and drug abuse. She struggles to recognize Claire and doesn't care how frightened her own daughter is around her. Claire has a reflection of the attic window in her eyes when moving throughout the house. It is the only place she has to get away from the demands of her family. But said room is dark and sad with no books or decorations or toys for her to play with. It is both an escape yet a prison of her misery. When in her fantasy world with her imaginary family, she has the reflections of the floodlights from the billboard. That the only place she feels happy and safe is in her own mind drowning out the screams and abuse she has to endure in the real world. Ultimately, all Claire ever wanted was to be seen, to be loved, cared for, and accepted by her family. The short begins and ends with Claire's Billboard family singing to her, promising a better life for her that is so close yet so very far away. Opal is widely regarded as Jack Stauber's masterpiece, and for good reason too. It's disturbing, strikingly animated, and has an incredible soundtrack. The songs are genuinely brilliant, and absolutely set the mood for the mysterious sense of dread in the house. But one of the most rewarding aspects of viewing Opal is its rewatchability. Once you understand the twist, Otherwise, innocuous details and quotes throughout the short become even more important. That you can see the evidence and fingerprints of the reality of Opal's situation leading up to the twist itself. By the way, this is deliberate, as Jack Stauber places great value on the choice of language when creating his songs. He said, quote, I get playful with the words, but they're always chosen very carefully. They all make perfect sense. I wouldn't sing something if it didn't." End quote. Despite these surreal visuals and catchy music, Claire's story is an all too familiar experience for many people. Individuals who survived an abusive household or those who actively shoulder that burden. Opal is a tragic story about the reality of family trauma and escapism. And in that regard, it is safe to say that this short is not for everyone. It is a very dark subject matter that is amplified by Opal's disturbing imagery. And frankly, it can be hard to stomach. That being said, I absolutely praise Opal for tackling such a difficult and uncomfortable topic and done so with nuance and empathy. It is a story worth telling with a message that sticks with you long after it ends. Hey, I know it did for me. So if you haven't seen it, hey, it's free on YouTube. Go check it out.